Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't choose why I want ay, to ay, 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 ay. Hey, hey, folks. We are really... Remember those old 80s bands used to really do those, like, uh, Panama? Oh, yeah. Like there was more high kicks and fun. A lot of fun. Spandex. Well, now it's sad. You have to have a fedora and, like, look down. Yes. And I always thought that was weird with bands... That was grunge brought that in. They were very serious. Like, even in the ah. 80s, though, like you couldn't be like, like you had yeah. to be like, oh, yeah. Ooh, we're f- but then, you know, how you had your Van Halen, and might as well jump. You know, he's got hot pink pants on and a weird shoestring around his bicep for some reason. Yeah, he was like the ultimate warrior. Yes, <laughs> yeah, straight yes. WWF. Might as well jump. The whole 80s, long hair, hairspray, spandex. It was a good time. Yeah. What was that other one? We're not gonna take it. (laughs) No. It was fun. Even the Beastie Boys were fun back then. The Beastie Boys are the most frustrating musical artist of Mm. all time. Because Sabotage and Fight for Your Right. I mean, I'm a rock and roll guy. Sure. I mean, those songs rip, and then they rock, and then they're like, intergalactic planetary. And they're wearing like yellow You don't like intergalactic? It sucks. What about Sabotage was fun? Sabotage is killer. Fight for Your Right. I got this fucking thought in my side. I mean, it's like, it's kicked ass. No yeah. sleep. Yeah. Till Did you ever see them play Sabotage on David Letterman? It's like one of the best performances on any late night yeah, show they ever. Fucking rule. It's crazy. And then it's just so like, cool. Just a bunch of fucking. Le- I mean, that, that intergalactic, pl- galactic, glanitary, whatever I, the I fuck. Can't, I can't abide by this. This is crazy. That song is amazing. Nonsense. Oh my God. It's terrible. Do you like any of their hip hop? Of Beastie Boys hip hop stuff? Uh, Chuck, you're going to get railed here. <laughs> It's two minutes in. You're it's already uh, fighting. I'm, I'm just saying what's going to happen. Is, <laughs> is girls hip hop? I mean, I like girls. Girls. Da, 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 da. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's Short Shot was great. Yeah. But yeah, sorry. But I mean, I just think the interpalactic sanitary. Yeah, know, it's yeah. Sanitary. Uh, and then sanitary they're doing napkin. Like, uh, I don't know. They stink, but they're frustrating. But yeah, um, I yeah. don't know. I like. I mean, just you have instruments. Play the instruments. I know. And then it's a wacky one because they're the number one artist, uh, hip hop artist of all time, record wise, mm. or something like that. I don't know. Maybe give that a goog. But they <laughs> they broke a lot of records, and the you know the real rappers were like, "Come on, you're killing me with these Jews." Well, I feel like Outkast was rap, but then they're like crossover. I mean, yeah. Outkast sold a million records. That I like. Outkast. I know you like to think your no, shit, shit don't, don't stink. stink. And then there was Roses. Or was that? Maybe that's the same song. Maybe that one. That album was huge. Fresh and clean, clean. Then they had the uh, Hey Ya. Yes, Hey Ya. That was that big. Was big. But before that, they had uh, Ah Ah Puss That Fuss. Everybody move to the back of the bus. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, Rosa Parks. Yes, she's good. That was big. Yeah, she was. She was. She was something. And she's one of those play, uh, things that every town claims her. Mm. You know, I go to like Illinois, whatever. And like, you know, Rosa Parks was here, and then Grand Rapids. They got yeah. the big Rosa Parks thing. Yeah, she had a miscarriage in Grand Rapids, <laughs> and she had diarrhea and in Rockville Center. Uh, but any jizz, hey. any tits. Good to be here. By the way, I saw the guy across the street, a hallway. Yeah, who's like seventy. He's with his dad. And his dad is like in his late hundreds. Right. He had he had two canes, the kind with the claw, the claw cane. Ah, uh, nothing can stop the claw. The double tricep claw. And he was like walking like. And then uh, his dad, the guy was like, "How you how you feeling, Dad? You seem to be getting along all right." And I'm like, "This? No, he doesn't. Yeah, he's brittle. What is it? Th- what's that thing inside of us? Do you have this? He's a death when, door. When you see the guy who's 115 walking like this." That you just kind of want to kick his ankles of course, out. What of is course. that? Well, I think it's because it's a sure thing. You know he's going down. He's going to topple like the Tower Seven. You know he's Notre Dame. <laughs> he's going down. It's so easy. He would just shatter like uh, like the guy in Unbreakable. Do you have this thing sometimes? Because I think this is a symptom of OCD. But then I think maybe it's normal. 
where you're, where you're walking up, you know, 6th Avenue, 5th Avenue, any numbered avenue, and you see someone walking, and you just think, wouldn't it be fun to just blast this person in the face and then sure. take off? We all have it. It's a it's a psychological thing. There's some term for it where mm. you just like, you know when you're on the edge of a building, you go, ah, maybe I'll just jump. Yeah. Might as well jump. Compulsive <laughs> something. I told you this story before, but uh, Pan- you brought up Panama. We were driving up to Montreal. <laughs> You know, we used to go every few months to see the strippers and drink. Sure. And uh, right as we crossed the border, Panama came on. Ah. And at the chorus, I turned down the volume and I went, Canada! Ah. And we had just crossed. Everybody went crazy. Oh, that's it was great. like one of those highlights. And you could feel everyone's excited, but also you could feel that people were like this. Damn, that was good. That was good. It was perfect timing and perfect Panama, Canada. You've never told me that. That's oh, new to me. I think I told you. You probably forgot. I blacked it out. Canada. That's great. And it was like right when you cross, too, it's all farm. And you're so excited because you're driving all day. And then you're closer to the tits. They should adopt that. Canada needs a little love. They got the brown face. They just had a stabbing spree. Uh, the aboriginals or whatever that's going on there with the, uh, the Native Americans or whatever. But they should adopt that. They need a little pep. Did I tell you this story already? I might be in reruns. I can't tell. Oh, boy. But I I was talking to my nephew about Halloween. I go there every year for Halloween, and he wants to be a ninja. And I said, I'll be a ninja. Maybe I'll paint my face all black. Mm. And he goes, yeah, do it. (laughs) He's like, you got to do it. Yeah. And it's he's a kid. So there's no, no one's told him. Sure. That's the thing. And deep inside, people, he's like, wait, you're a ninja. Right. That's the be- it's pure, it's innocent. I love that. That's what, what's so annoying about the cancel stuff because you're like, he doesn't know. Right. You just made up this weird world of rules that he doesn't know about. Indeed. He's got no uh, evil in him <laughs> until he gets plowed. But yeah. Yeah, what can you do? I yeah. gotta plow him. I dressed up as uh, Pocahontas, uh, all kinds of Native America. I had the headdress, I had the bow and arrow, I had the blood on my face and all that. I was, I was all in. I dressed up as. Uh, What's his name? The Black Ghostbuster? Oh. Ernie. It's supposed to be Eddie Murphy. Really? Yeah. Oh, he would have stolen it. It would have been so much better. I'm, I'm not a huge Ghostbusters guy. Oh, love the GB. It's fun, but to me, Bill Murray... I mean, uh, by the way, Chuck is just fuming. I'm I shitting know. on Beastie Boys and Ghostbusters. His fucking I'm not, I'm wig not a Ghostbusters guy either. Really? I, I, I appreciate it. It's That's a lot like, right up your anal. Yeah, you're like, dressed like a Ghostbusters guy. <laughs> What are you talking about? You got a proton pack. Oh, uh, well, that's your hump. Sorry. But um, but, uh, but I, I just think Bill Murray's the funny one, and everyone yes. else is kind of like, well. Well, they're scientists. I know, but they could be funny. You could have some other funny. Well, Eddie he, Murphy would have been funny. I think Bill Murray it was the, the comedy really. He say, I mean, he was my hero growing up, and then Eddie Murphy, I think they would have clashed. But you put on Dumb and Dumber, Lloyd's funny, Harry's funny. Mike Starr, whatever his character's name is, is funny. Mike Starr. That's quite a pull. That's the guy from uh, Goodfellas and Dumb oh, and Dumber. Oh, oh, the ketchup and mustard. <laughs> it's Mike Starr. The gas yeah. man. Yes, gas man. He's funny. <laughs> yeah, Those yeah. collars are funny. Even uh, Holly Berry, whatever the fuck her name is, is Holly, funny. Holly, Holly, Lauren Holly. Lauren Holly. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Wow. She was a hot little piece of cupcake, and I don't know where she went off to. Well, I think Jim Carrey ruined her life. I think that guy is one of those guys that just leaves a wake behind him. He's a kook and a half. I mean, have you seen his uh, shoutings lately? He's on Bill Maher. He's putting shoutings. his feet up. I mean, he just he has all these weird rants now where you're like, you might need a, a hug, buddy. Yeah, he's got some problems. I think he had a girlfriend. He gave a girl herpes, and then she killed herself. Yeah, yeah. Which I'll, I've been trying to do for years, but <laughs> this lady won't quit. It'll happen. <laughs> Keep at it. Don't quit. <laughs> Don't give up. Well, Esty keeps giving her seller spots. I think that, you know. Oh, that'll keep her alive. Gives, gives it's like her, an IV. Gives her hope. But eventually, we'll both, you know, double suicide. Yeah. A suicide pack seems kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, the ultimate buy. We had a pact. Because you're kind of like, all right, here we go. This is it. But you really have to... Press the button at the same time. I know, because uh, they always say when you're on the edge of that uh, railing in the movie The Bridge, that uh, they always go right when their foot comes off the rail. They go, "I regret it." Well, Every that was time. That was in Artie Lang's book. So oh, the, <laughs> he said um, when he, I think he took pills or stabbed his tits or something. Seventy. And he said say forty-eight times stabbing. Ooh, something like that. Sorry. He said he had read that fact that <clears throat> the majority of people when they kill themselves, they regret it immediately after they take the pills. They call 911 on themselves. Yes. Or if you jump off the bridge, you feel it. And he said he just sat there waiting to feel that. It never came. Ooh. He was just like, nah, nah, I want to die. Ah. And then didn't. And we're grateful. I'll I live Norm. 
I haven't seen him in a while, but uh, I love Artie. Love Artie, so funny. He doesn't get. I don't feel like he gets his due. Like I would watch him and Attell go at it, and they were you know neck and neck. Yeah, he's unbelievably funny. By the way, that's in the book. I'm not neck telling no neck. tales out of uh, out of Jews. Was that a uh, who? Thank God, there's people reading these books because everybody's like, I wrote a book, I have a book out, and I assume someone will read it, but it ain't gonna be me or anyone I know. No, it's weird because like New York Times bestseller, you're like, how many people does it take to get on a bestseller? Exactly. Who's reading? I never see people reading. It's like 40, 50 people. Well, a lot of people have the, the Nook. The Nook. And then the, the Cranny. The Kindle. Kindle. And I think people read in bed and on the shitter. So why would I see that? I'll read on the subway a bit. I used to. Now on the subway, I'm just swiveling. Yeah, there was a uh, yeah head on a swivel that I suppose you could swivel. There was a uh, Instagram page or what do you call it? Thread hmm. profile. Thread. Seems okay. Like well, there was an Instagram thing where it was uh, called Hot Guys Reading. Oh. And a lady would go around and f- take photos of hot guys reading. You see me on there at all? Or? No, you were on a different thread. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Something else. Gangly weirdo yeah. uh, forehead. I guess I'd fuck him's reading. Uh, that's generous. Yeah. But yeah. Good point. Uh, some people have fucked me. I fucked some pretty hot ass. Oh yeah, pretty hot cunt out Who there. Who was he? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, all right. Anyways, all right. Let's get fired up here. I, I mean, I got I got stories up the ass, and I'm sure you got a lot. I got some humdings, baby, coming at you. All right. You ready for this? Yes. You want to start, or should I? You start? go. You go. Okay. Well. Had a weird weekend, you know, usually our weekends uh, entail, you know, a Thursday, go to Denver, go to Austin, go to Chicago and do your, your weekend, you come home on Sunday. Absolutely. This weekend, it was one night only, makeup date for the fully loaded tour in Brandon, Mississippi. Right. So uh, it got rained out as an amphitheater outdoors, it got rained out a couple weeks ago, so they go, hey, can you guys come back? And I go, fuck it, I'll come back, you guys paid me. If I got a gig, I do the gig. All right. There you go. So go back down to get to Jackson, Mississippi, in this cum-guzzling climate with the flights and the anal and the economy and the Bidens and the Greta Thunbergs. It's a whole thing. So you got to fly to Atlanta, connect, fly to Jackson, then drive from Jackson to Brandon. Okay. So it's this is 8,000 people. You know, it's Burt's show. It's already re- it's sold out again. Chelsea Lynn, Big J Okerson, Brian Simpson. A fun, fun show. Who's Chelsea Lynn? Trailer Trash Tammy. I don't She's know huge. Those people. Huge online. I got to get in the scene. I'm out yes, of the scene. I got to get the in the scene. It's enough already with this. Like, I'm trying to live a balanced life. Fuck the balance. I need to be unhealthy and really get in there. Yes. Tractor yes. trailer, Timmy. I got to check them out. You're at a Nora Jones concert in Asbury <laughs> Park, and we're all cutting clips over here. Uh, it's bad news, Bears. I'm just posting them at noon. I got four oh, views. Noon. <laughs> It's Who horrible. I, it's just horrible. I'm over here listening to my set, being like, "I'll change this word. That'll be funny." Yeah. People are like, "Where's your, uh, where's your clip of you calling someone a homo? You piece of shit." I like it. I'm so sick of these clips. These crowd work clips have gotten real bottom of the barrel. It's like, oh, I think I stepped on a tack. Uh, I guess I got attacked. Here's my dates. Here are my dates. It's brutal. That's bad. One guy coughs. He's got COVID. Dates. <laughs> That's it. That's a clip. That'd be a good clip. But yeah, either way. Put a bit out there, you queefs. But all right. So, uh, big show. So I got an, like a 930 flight, 1030 flight to Atlanta, whatever. What are you going to do? Flight gets canceled. All oh. right. Now, your first thought is, maybe I just won't go. That's all I ever want. <laughs> it's a beautiful feeling because you just start uh, getting endorphins rushing right into your sphincter. And you're like, maybe I'll just stay in this lounge. I'll have a cup of coffee. I'll eat all the food. and I'll go home. I have that even, I love doing the pod, I love you, I love seeing you, Chuck's here. As I'm walking up, (laughs) I have this moment of like, maybe I got the dates wrong, maybe I'm the only one here. Like, I got here, you guys aren't here, I'm like, maybe it's wrong and I'll just go home. Yes. And then I hear you in the voice hallway and I'm like, ah, damn. Uh, And this is fun. I know, we're having a good time, but any obligation, that's what gets you. You gotta get up, get out of the house. Leaving the house in New York takes a little bit extra oomph. Mm-hmm. You know, you leave the house in Cleveland, you go, hey, I'll get in my car, I'll go get a smoothie, whatever. In New York, it's like, ah, just that uh, New York air hits you. There's a hobo jizzing on your daughter, and there's a uh, stabbing. It's 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 a lot. I'm going to talk all about it. I got oh, all kinds of notes over here about we it. We got a kook. All right. So 
Uh, first flight gets canceled, so then you t- you talk to the manager like, "Hey, look, not looking good. Flight got canceled." Because once your flight's canceled, now your connection's missed. Mm-hmm. So now it's a double whammy. So I'm in the lounge. I got champagne. I got a, a gay twink fanning me with a big leaf, and I'm like, "This is great." And he goes, "I got you a new flight." Beep 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 beep. But you're gonna land at six twenty. The show's at seven. Oh so my god! So you go, god. man. I haven't showered. I had all these uh, high hopes of getting to the the hotel, showering, shitting, shaving, and jerking, and those are gone. Mm-hmm. So you're like, I stink. I'm gay. My dick's weird. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sit at the lounge. You know, whatever. Do the flight to Atlanta. Now you're in Atlanta. Sit at the lounge again for three hour layover. Then you take a 41-minute flight from Atlanta to Jackson. I'm going to Jackson. Meanwhile, Jackson has a goddamn water shortage. Did you hear about this? I don't know about the water shortage. The whole country's in shambles, monkey pox. They got no water. It's uh, it's like a crisis. Biden's on the phone. They're, they're sending him water. Fiji, it's a whole thing. Bird crisis. Yes. So, uh, crisis actor. So, uh... Finally, I land there. I go straight to the show, and it's just it's an 11-hour travel day. Uh, and it's one of those things where you're like, I could have gotten up at 2, mm-hmm. you know, but I had to be here at 9.30, whatever. So thank God for the lounge. Finally land there. Once you land there, it's all kind of gravy. You see Big J, you see Brian, you see Bert. We're all hanging out. Pete, remember Pete from The Bachelor? Oh, Pete. Love I think about Pete. Pete every night. For Pete's sake. That guy is hot. Hot, sexy dude, cool guy. He's kind of Bert's, I don't know, handler, Chelsea handler. One, what do you call it, right hand queef? Right hand man. So uh, what about the left? There's no right hand woman either. Ah! Who the hell has a right-hand woman? Yes. I'll give a woman a right hand. Yeah, the back of it. All right, so uh, I saw in The Simpsons once years ago. He goes, hey, shut up, sister. I'll give you a raspberry. Never forgot it. Always stuck with me. Bart said that to Lisa. I might win a raspberry for my movie. <laughs> huh? Razzy. Oh, okay. Uh, so finally I get to the gig, whatever, and it all goes away. Now, Bert's like, we thought you were going to be late because your flight landed at, you know, 4 a.m. So we're putting you doing 30 minutes because Joey Diaz didn't show. Ah. He got some kind of thing. No show Joe. No show Diaz. So so I'm like, oh, great. I'm doing a half hour for 8,000 people. This will be exciting. Wow. So Big J, you know, everybody goes, Brian goes up, uh, Chelsea Lynn goes up, kills. Everybody's great. They do an intermission. Then Big J goes on. Rips. I mean, he just pulls that chair up. He's sitting on a stool and he's just pontificating, murdering in eight thousand people. Got got him in the palm of his fingerless glove. He's so good. He's so good. He's very, very funny. Man, he's funny. And not, not only that, he's killing backstage. And yeah. then he walks on with his jean shorts and murders. Boy, he's talented. He's good. So I'm in awe. I'm just watching him on the on the monitor going, oh, this son of an onion. And you got to follow him? And I got to follow oh, him. Oh, jeez. But I'm like, eh, they're hot. Everybody's killing. Uh, it's a makeup date. They're happy to be here. I got a million tweets like, can't wait to see in Brandon. Beep, 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 beep. So I go out and I go, it's going to be back in the South. I'm from right around here. And they're like, ah, they love it. You feel a connection. And I do a couple things about Jackson. Hey, your water shortage. And they're like, oh, we don't care for that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that wasn't good. And then I go, well, all right, well, let me go right into material because I might have taken a risk. Let me just get right to it. Yeah. And uh, I do a New York joke, and mm. they hated it. It got like zero. Oh, 8,000 people getting zero is loud. I've been there, yeah. Yes, yes. So you're like, well, that was weird. And now it's outdoor, the muggy, the sticky, it's all hitting me. And the the water pipes are going. I am sweating. Well, you should collect some of that and give it to the people. <laughs> It'd be nice. Wash your dishes with this, you fucking hicks. It should, and, you know, you, you, you get a look at yourself on that big screen, and it's just, <laughs> you know, it's a rainforest on my forehead. Rain forehead. So... Big bomb, and I'm I got the clock down there, and I'm like, well, you know, how long am I? Oh, I'm doing thirty. Oh, eating it. <laughs> I get a, a titter here and there. I, I, you know, and you're outdoor. I made the one joke. I go, I actually heard a cricket. One guy goes, huh? You know that guy? Uh, you know, like the the condescending, like meh, meh, meh. Yeah, that's like a you know, sheep. Yeah, Rogan does that shit. You know, he goes meh, meh. You're like, fuck you, you bald cunt. <laughs> he does do that. I hate the meh, meh. I'm like, that oh, was pretty good. Yeah. Well, whatever. 
So, uh, and also beforehand, I got all these texts like, hey, we're here to see you, like from uh, old friends, like college friends drove in, and whew, I, I must have lost 17 pounds and four gallons of water, because I my asshole was wetter than uh, Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> Wet ass pussy. Yes, WAP. So a uh, big bomb came off stage and just soaked. I, somebody threw me a beach towel, and then Pete put a trauma blanket on me. I was so wrecked. And uh, so who's is Bert next? Bert's next, and he went out there and killed it. Now, do you bring him out, or does he disappear? No, Dave Williamson is the host. He's a great guy, great host. And uh, I get off, and I'm like, oh, and it's just one of those things where the crew won't really look at you in the eye. Oh, you know, Jesus. you know, you know that feeling when you're like, that was rough, huh? And they're like, ah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> what is this uh, Sanskrit? You know, <laughs> like it's fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's just maple. So, uh, yeah, real big bomb, and then you proceed to just uh, drink it away. Oh, my God. I mean, I'd like to see some footage on this, because I'm sure you sold a thousand T-shirts and signed some tits, and some guy blew you. I stayed backstage in the fetal position. I don't believe it. Somebody must have gotten some laughs. There must have been 40 people laughing. Maybe 40, but 40 and 8 now is uh, is nothing nice. Not great math. Uh, That's a... That's ugly. It was real bad. It was a stink fest. And you know what? You, you just don't connect. Like, the jokes work, but it just didn't didn't get from here to here. Well, it's tough to follow Jay. I mean, you're following all these people that you'd never follow. He probably, you know, he got the, the, he got them used to one thing, and then right. you're doing a different thing. And, I guess. And his thing is, you know, better. So it's like it's hard, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess so, because... Uh, I did. I did the A. I was like, I brought it, but somebody had a good point. They were like, "Well, we did this this arena run, mm-hmm. and you get used to doing arenas, and you figure out your flow and your rhythm and what jokes to do because you got to go with bangers. You can't have any nuanced shit and yeah. subtle shit in an arena." And uh, I did maybe some subtle shit, and they were like, "Yeah, you got to go dick in the ass pounding." Absolutely, spit on it first, lick it, smell it. Maybe a little Astro Glide. That's sure. good stuff, by the way. I used it last night. Yeah, me too. Hey. And I'm alone. Ah. So. I think it was the same woman. <laughs> but yeah, good times. Wow. Wow, welcome back. And so you just came back the next day? That's it? I flew back. We got drunk in Bert's uh, hotel room. We all talked shit about every comic on earth. I got drunk. And then, yeah, flew back the next day for a good 10-hour travel day. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Because I think he was in Atlantic City Saturday, Sunday, right? Or am I crazy? He was. Yeah. He took a private jet up to old AC, and then I took a uh, two for pedal, puddle jumper. Because they asked me about that day, but then at that time I had booked, I had went to Houston to go see my wife, who's ah, gone for a month. Sorry. So, you know, that's what I do. I don't do shows. I go visit my wife, I ride a bike around town. Well, my career's failing. I'm going to well, kill myself. You go, because I feel like I brought it down to a screeching queen. No, that so was you... great. I mean, that was uh, that's compelling stuff. I mean, bombing for 8,000. I've been there. I told yeah. you. I did it for 15,000, and one guy laughed. And I started oh. to say, this guy gets it, and I had to stop. It was bad. And that was hometown. That was uh, New York. That was right here in the old U.S. of New York. Big Apple, baby. Hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by DraftKings. The NFL's opening week was action-packed, and it's just getting started. Getting ready for week two of touchdowns, big plays, and even bigger wins with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on any football game and get $200 in free bets instantly. Want more action? Everybody can experience the thrill of DraftKings' early win promotion. It's simple. This Sunday, bet on any NFL team to win. If your team leads by 10 at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. That's a hell of a deal. That's, I like that. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code TUESDAYS. Tuesdays, excuse me, Tuesdays to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code Tuesdays. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the National Football League. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. There you go, folks. Hey, hey, Tuesdays story is brought to you by Factor. Fall is almost here, which means back to school, back to work, and back to being too busy to eat nutritiously. Factor makes it easy to eat well for all meals and snacks. These are fresh, never-frozen meals 
delicious and nutritious. With calorie smart and keto options, Factor meals are perfectly portioned to keep you on track with your goals. Factor now offers 30 meals per week and 36 add-on options. Hot tamale. Each Factor meal arrives pre-prepared by their team of chefs, ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. Change your order up every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. They offer vegan and veggie meals, keto meals, calorie smart options, cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep you fueled and focused all day long. They got great smoothies too. They sent some and it was amazing. Head to go.factor75.com slash Tuesdays 130. I know that was a mouthful, but we'll sound it out. Use Tuesdays 130 to get $130 off across six boxes. Wow, that's a steal. That's code Tuesdays 130 at go.factor75.com slash Tuesdays 130 for a whole 130 clams off. Get on it, folks. By the way, how about this? I'll be at the Garden on Sunday for Pearl Jam. Ooh. And then they're playing an invite only at the Apollo Theater. It's a serious radio event. 1,500 seats, no tickets sold. Invite and contest winners. My old numero uno first New York pal, Eldano Sardoro. Sard- uh, oh, old uh, big headiest. Uh, Denverius. <laughs> big Soder. No daddyus. Soder came through with the hook up, baby. So I will be wow. there. One of 15 hundo. Whoa! Pearl Jam with the Apollo. This is a make-a-wish. Back of my old neck of the way, a couple blocks from my Whoa! old apartment. Harlem. Soder. Coming through big. Wow. Uh, it's wild. I mean, that ticket, you can't even get like a resale ticket. There's no tickets were sold. It's crazy. Is there a party that goes, well, screw the garden. I'm going to the intimate. I don't want to uh, I don't want to be spoiled and do both. I'm going back to back. I'm going to get the it. I'm going to get the Intimate, and then uh, the Intimate's Donuts, and then the next day I'm going to MSG. <laughs> and I'm taking Steve Rogers, who uh, feels like a make-a-wish. He's like a boy. Yes, yes. Well, I hope you get another ticket for that hog of his. <laughs> I'm going to hold him in my arms. For the, he's going to be on my shoulders for <laughs> rocking in the free world. Get a Bjorn. Uh, um, but anyways, did you, did you hit up the $3 movie day? I did not. I did not. What was that, Sunday? Saturday. Yeah, I was, I was, I was on a fucking airplane. Chuck's making faces. What's the face? I, I just I got excited. I bought tickets for a movie and it was the wrong movie and I uh, went to go see it. Uh, they you don't share it. You, you tear the ticket. You go yeah, wherever. The movie that I wanted to, that I thought it was it wasn't out yet. Uh, oh uh, Jesus, that's embarrassing. Really Neither am I. <laughs> yeah, yikes. three dollars got me all excited. I was all hopped up. Um, boy, well, it's the weird thing though, and I don't want to sound like an elitist, and this will probably rub people the wrong way, maybe. But it's funny because it's like you're like three dollar movie day. We gotta go. But I'm in Kingwood, Texas, where a movie is like eleven bucks. You're right. Like, I'm saving sixteen bucks. It's not crazy. Yeah, and also it kind of turns into Spirit Airlines, where you get the riffraff in there. Well, that's where this story's headed. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, it is fun. Like not to sixteen bucks is sixty, but you know we're doing okay here. You're like. I could go the next day, have the theater to myself. Right. But whatever, you want to participate, it's fun. And and it's good to see people in a theater. It's nice to see a full house. Yeah, it is. Good but show. I tweeted this, and Patton Oswalt retweeted. Ooh. But you're like, instead of $3 movie day, what if like $10 movie decade? Why don't we just have it be, why don't you just make it more affordable? It'd be nice, yeah. It's, I feel the same way about college. It's so weird to be like, all right, for one day, it's three bucks. Yeah. But then we're back to $22. I know. It, the, they rape you at those movies, not to mention the milk duds. <laughs> but, uh, well, so we decided we'll go to the movies. It'll be fun. We went, uh, maybe it was Sunday, actually. Hmm. No, it was Saturday. Yeah, it right. doesn't matter. The Sabbath. So we go to the $3 movies. We go to see Beast. You know about Beast? Is that the Idris Elba vehicle? Idris Elba, who I never watched The Wire. Yeah. Is that guy good, or is he just a good-looking guy? I think he's pretty good. What else is he in? He was in The Office for the a office while. The Office is great. That's a sitcom. What writer? I'm talking about a sitcom. <laughs> uh, he's, he's hilarious in, in The Office. I've never seen him in a thing other than The Office. Well, he's a hunk, and I think they put him in hunky roles. He's never had a meaty, actory role, like emotional. Yeah. Has I mean, he? What what the fuck's he in? Chuck's I, never, looking I don't know up. anything about this guy. He's in stuff. I just always hear his name. I got him confused with a different guy, the guy that died. 
Uh, Chadwick Boseman. No, not him. There's another guy that was also in The Wire. He's in Gone Baby Gone. He plays the cop. I think he had a scar on his face. Oh, Omar. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Yeah, he was very good. I met him once. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, he, he got mad at me. I made a joke about the scar. Oh, no. Yeah, I couldn't help it. Seal joke? I don't know. I think no. maybe, maybe The Wire is the thing that he's most taken seriously for because he's in like he's, he's in the Avengers movies. He's in, right, he was in the crap. Dark Tower from Stephen King, which is like a bomb. Big that was bomb. Like a huge okay. bomb. Yeah, he is a like, Dark Tower. Everything is... <laughs> <laughs> I had a dark tower in Jackson. See, it's like he was in fucking the Jungle Book live action remake. Yeah. You know, it's. Is it possible this guy sucks? Uh, he was in Prometheus, which wasn't bad. Never heard of that. Heard of that. It was uh, an alien sequel. Maybe, uh, uh, what's his come name? on, I'm eating over here. <laughs> Rock uh, and Rolla was good. He was in Rock and Rolla. Rock and right. Rolla. So he's in a bunch Guy of. Guy He's a bunch of sh- uh, schlock. Yeah, it's whatever. Well, anyways, he's not great in this, but it's also a cheese ball, stinky script. By the way, reviewing movies really is an art. It is a skill that I don't have. Mm. I do a movie review podcast. I tell, I'm like this, ah, I don't know. I didn't like it. My father's gay. I suck. I can't explain it. It's not good. Uh. Then you read, somebody wrote about this movie. It is, um, oh, fuck. I don't want to fuck up the words because it's so funny. I don't like to give these reviewers too much credit. There's a couple good ones. The rest stink. It's like comics. Well, they wrote... Um, it's admirably lean and ultimately, un- he said, if you would like to watch Idris Alba fight a lion, this admirably lean and ultimately disposable movie is Ooh. the one for you. And I was like, that's perfect. That's good. Because it's lean. There's nothing there. It's 90 minutes. They're just like, okay, there's a lion. He's scary. There yes. you go. Yes. And it's just completely unnecessary. But here's what I want to talk about. First of all, I want to get into what happened at the movie. But there's a, it's, it's a total... Jurassic Park. It's Jurassic Park mm. with a lion. Okay. Just and they, one lion? Just one lion. One. I mean, there's a bunch of lions, but there's one like, whoa, the That's lion. Not, not much of a park. And we thought maybe the lion was going to be like, a, you know, a demon or something. Sure. He's just like a lion. Just a big, big, fat lion. I thought he'd have a gun or something. Yeah. <laughs> So nothing, no strap on. Is he on drugs? Is he coked up? Nothing. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh boy, he gets burned, and so he's all like, oh, I'm oh all right, he's a bird lion. <laughs> but so the wo- the girl, everybody stinks. It's just there's nothing to it. It's silly. The girl's wearing a Jurassic Park shirt ah. as like an homage. Like get it, Easter egg. But then. They're like driving in a jeep as the lion chases them. Objects in mirror closer than they appear. They skid off. They get stuck in a tree, and the lion is trying to reach in the car, and the kids are screaming. But then I'm like, "You've established that Jurassic Park exists in this world, uh-huh. so shouldn't the girl be like, oh my god, isn't this crazy? I was wearing a Jurassic Park shirt yesterday, <laughs> right, and right. now the movie's happening to us.' Yes, yes. Like if you're gonna pay tribute to Jurassic Park." The girl, there should be dialogue. They should acknowledge it. She's like, this is exactly like Jurassic Park. Isn't that crazy? Right. Yeah, that's no good. And how how on the nose are we going to go? We already got the shirt thing. Do we need a scene exactly like it? What, what's next? The guy's going to go, clever girl, and then get attacked? <laughs> well, there was a guy with that accent with uh, the gun. Muldoon. Then they kept going in the water, looking for the line. There's like things where he's just like, all right, I got to find this line. He's like, let me get waist deep in this swamp. Where you're like, What? Right. Why are you getting in the water? Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. But anyways, it was fun. Let me just get right to the story. What about the gators? There were gators. Ah. And then they never come back. I can write this movie. It's like gators swim by, so you're like, okay, make a note, gators. But then that was the end of it. Was Newman in it? No Newman. Ah, all right. I'd love to see Newman in something. Love Wayne Knight. Underrated. Boy, he's good. He lost weight, and I think it hurt his career. Possibly. <clears throat> Possibly. Well, well, so it's $3 movie day, and you know how it is. So you get there, you buy your tickets, you pick... I always go back aisle, last row aisle, because I have to piss or shit. Last row? Wall? I'm against the wall. No, I want to recline. (coughs) I don't want some asshole behind me Ah, jerking off my hair. Kevin, recline. But but don't you think if there's no one there, it doesn't matter anyway. Like, if there's no one in the theater, there's no one behind you. Well, this is full. Oh! This is full pipes. Got it, got it. It's $3 movie day. Got it. So we go up there, we sit, and, and we get there early. So you know that it's gonna be full because you buy on the ticket thing. We get there, and there's just two high school queefs in, in the seats next to us, but the theater's empty. Uh huh. So we go there, and we're like, "Hey, sorry, these are our seats. We'll sit here next to you." So I got the the, the fat 
high school queef next to me. Yeah. And I try to be like cool dad guy. Yes. I was like, hey, sorry, we'll be a good, I'll be a good seat partner. And he's like, huh? Uh, and I go, I'll keep the farts to a minimum. And I think he's gonna laugh, but he's like, a fucking idiot. Uh, but I was like, ah, swing and a miss. I've been there. So we sit there. Then the movie starts. We're about oh six, seven, eight minutes into the movie. They're doing the cheese. Mom died. Uh. Yep, yep, yep. Lion. Then the big old Lion King family comes in. Uh oh, what's that mean? About seven, eight people. They want to see some lions on their Saturday. Three dollar. Uh, way my way. Now this movie's. I don't know what it's rated. Maybe it's R. Maybe it's. I don't know. It's about lions eating people. Sure. They come up, and it's all shadowy because it's bright. They're backlit. We got a big aunt, I think. Big fat aunt. (laughs) She comes in first. You're like, okay, there's the big fat aunt. Movie's movie's going, by the way. Sure. And um, then you got, like, I'm going to say a seven-year-old. Sure, all right. Seems a little young for the lion-eating movie. I'm turned on. But whatever. Then you get a real Todd, a real toddler. Mm, toddler Barry. Two, three years old, waddling, a waddling toddler. I hate a waddle. So you're like, well, that seems a little strange. Yes, and uh, you could get a cry out of this Todd. Well. <laughs> oh, boy, sorry, I'm gonna, jumping the gun here. Not put the horse before the lion. All right. So the toddler walks <laughs> in, and they're really waddling. Then I see the old fat mom walk in with a big <laughs> swoochy. With a baby. That's a swoochie. Wait. <laughs> oh, oh, like a... The, the, the swoop Yes, thing. yes. She's got the swoop on. What are we, in Namibia? <laughs> What's going on with these people? Well, that's what the film is happening. <laughs> oh, I see. So then they go, she sits, and she's got the baby, and she just pulls the baby out like this and like puts it in the seat. There's oh, no like car Lord. seat. She just puts it in the big recliner Did seat. Did she have a jug of water in her head as well? <laughs> and the whole time, it's like... Hey, what, uh, what, are we in the right seat? You want to sit in this seat? Okay, well, you put the baby in the seat. You can't sit there because I might have to feed the what baby. What is that? It's insane. And the movie, you know, you got to open with a scare. Sure. So it's literally like, get down! Yes. The beast! Death and the blow. kid's like, bah! <laughs> it's the death <laughs> blow. And so then the lady has to attend to her baby. So she's sitting out. On the seat like this, like on the edge of it, Uh facing this way. Now, some engineer spent hours and hours and years designing this to be stadium style so no one's blocking the view. Because when we were kids, they didn't think about this shit. Everybody was flat. So if a big, tall guy sat in front of you, you're like, I can't see the movie. It's over. You're ruined. And after 50 years of that shit, they built stadium style seating. Vaulted. Yes, so this lady's, she's uh, bucking the system by sitting like this. Uh-huh. So all I see is her big head and the subtitles because it's in Africa. Ah. So I'm missing the titles right. like this. I'm trying to follow this horseshit movie. Yes. And she's blocking the thing. And then the toddler's like, Mom! Ah. Ah. She's doing that. And then the baby starts. Ah. Ah. We're back on spirit. And you might think, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. I brought the baby. No movement. Mm. Nothing. 90 straight minutes of a baby crying. Wow. I mean, moments where it doesn't cry. Oh, hey. (laughs) Excuse me. Crying baby, head blocking the screen, toddler chatting. Is there a moment of like, oh, sorry, everybody. I I ruined the party here with these uh, retarded children. No, no. And it's literally, I mean, it's a fucking bloody, crazy, lion, wow. clawing, fighty thing. Yeah, yeah. But That's Anna's. a bummer. Big bum, big, big movie ruiner. It was real wacky, and, uh, you know, what can you do? And it's one of these situations where you're like, it's hard to be like, hey, excuse me, because, you know, you'll be viral in about five minutes. Oh, you got that right. Wow. So... It was quite a quite a scene, but uh, I think that's what you get with three dollar movies. I guess so. How do you like that? And they stayed through the whole thing, and uh, I, I mean, don't know. I, but isn't that traumatic? That's brutal, and I empathize because it's got to be hard having twelve kids you don't like, and you know you want to bring them to a movie. It's air conditioning. It's it's something to do. It's two hours of like, all right, I get a minute. But you still fuck over the whole theater. And can't you see Wreck-It Ralph or whatever? Or, you know what I mean? Like, uh, bunnies play for fun? Well, I think Idris is a big draw. People go, oh, we like that guy. I know, but not for a ba- It's a lion it's, movie. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Lion like a rug. I don't get it, but 
it's uh, something to do. I guess it's something to do, and it was three bucks and uh, it killed the time. But I, I, I just picture that kid years from now being afraid of cats. That's so funny because when I was a kid, like you, when I was a kid, I uh, had a recurring nightmare about lions chasing me and my family off a cliff. No kidding. Recurring. Wow. Interesting. Oh, yeah. So put that in your pipe and queef on it. No, no kidding. You ever had the recurring nightmare? Oh, yeah, big time. My recur- my re- recurring, that's hard to say. Recurring. Recurring mm. is uh, I'm driving a car, but I'm in the passenger seat or the back seat. So I'm uh-huh. like trying to be like, ah, like I'm not in the right position yeah. to control. So I'm like out of control. Interesting. And I'm driving around the street. I have that one. That's very telling. And I have an also a recurring dream where I'm showing up to class and it's like the last day and I've never been there. Ooh. Where they're like, hey, and I'm like, I, I didn't do any of this. I don't know any of this. Stuff. Right. I don't I didn't come to one class. There you go. Yeah. Both very telling. You Scary. don't want to be out of control. Yes. And I have also the the teeth. You have no teeth, which is just anxiety. That's like straight up. All my teeth wow. are falling out. That would be better. That'd be a blessing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Start well, fresh. Interesting. Good stuff. Recurring nightmare. The beast. Uh folks. Speaking of which, I would love to wake up every morning with zero brain fog, a clear mind, and the energy of my younger self. Thanks to First Person, I can now take an active role in my brain's health. First Person is a precision-targeted supplement system that uses the brain-boosting benefits of mushrooms to activate the full potential of human brain health. Made with functional mushrooms, first-person supplements stimulate the body's natural production of triggers that can help improve energy, mood, and sleep. I love these supplements they sent us. They sent sunbeams for focus, golden hour for joy, moonlight for sleep, and I've been shoving them right inside my caboose and just Mm -hmm. loving them. First person uses 100% grain-free organic mushrooms sourced from best-in-class vendors. Start improving your brain and health cognition with First Person. Get 15% off your first order by going to getfirstperson.com and use code TUESDAYS. That's G-E-T-F-I-R-S-T-P-R-S-O-N.com. Code TUESDAYS for 15% off your first order. Get firstperson.com code TUESDAYS. Folks, these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any illness. Back to the show! woo I gotta tell you this one. So, last night, Hmm. the lady's been all over me with the, uh, she's like, so what are you wearing to the wedding? And I go, oh yeah, the wedding. No, I never thought about it. I figured I'd, you know, go in a cutoffs and a a baby tee. But she's like, you know, you got to get a thing together. I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. So I go down to Suit Supply. Are you wearing a suit or a tux? Well, that's the question, but they got both. Okay. So I go, let me go in there and really get eight eight uh, crew members or staff people and really yuck it up and have a good time. It'll be like a montage, you know? It'll be like, I'm too sexy. And I come out wearing <laughs> the different shit, you know? I got the cummerbund on my head. Yeah, exactly. So we'll do the whole uh, movie montage. And, of course, you go and... It was raining. I'm running up. I'm wearing this, you know, and I got a box over my head. I do the box. You ever do the box? Uh, I've eaten a box, but I don't usually carry a box over my head. No. All right. Well, I do the box over the head because they all, all the, the garbage is out. So I do the box over. So I'm wet. I'm ugly. I got the box. I got a jerry curl. And I go to the front door of suit supply, and I'm I'm pulling on it. I'm pulling on it. I'm like, God. I'm pushing. There's like a button there, like an intercom. And I'm like, God. It's wet. It's raining. I look like a like a dirty cat. And then this guy walks up with like a nice latte and a scarf, and he goes. He pushes the door open. Ah. Oh. And uh, I think he thought I was a deranged person. And he's like, "You coming up to suit supply?" And I go, "Oh yeah." And he goes, "You have an appointment?" And I go, "No." And he goes, ah, "All right, come on up." So you do the walk up. I'm wet. Everybody in there is immaculate. This guy's putting on suits. They look amazing. Got cummerbunds and vests and all these shiny shoes. And they all look at me like, Ugh, "Who brought uh, the deranged weirdo, the derelict?" So I go up and they're like, "What do you need, sir?" And I go, "I'm ha- I'm getting married." And they go, "Oh, okay, great. Uh, what do you want to wear?" And I go, "I don't know. I wanted to try a bunch of stuff on." And they were they were like, "Ah, 
This is brutal because they have to be nice. It's a nice place. But, but I'm so confused. She's not involved. She doesn't want to be involved. Because you have to. You can't clash. What if she's wearing pink and you're wearing blue or whatever? Well, I mean, she I'd wears look, white. She goes white. Yeah, white, white. That's right. Yeah. But usually the wife is in there. Oh, is that right? I think, but my wife wasn't. Hey, you see? Different. Yeah, my wife didn't yeah. give a shit. I mean, you put a suit on, you go and get married. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well, do you have a whole party? Do you have a bunch of guys? No, I don't do the guys. No party. No guys. No party. I wanted to look good for the party. So uh, I go up and I just go, well, let's do, let's try some stuff. And they're like, God, sir, this is how it works. And I got, I'm ready. I'm like, let's do that. I got, I'm, I'm, it's my birthday. Let's do it, sister. Sure. And the guy goes, you need a drink. They, any place that offers you a drink is a nice place. Yeah. Oh, you got it. It's also interesting. I have all these places to like give an appointment. You say no. And they go, well, come on up. And you're yeah. like, well, what was the appointment thing? I know. I know. I guess if it gets busy, you're fucked. But it wasn't right. that busy. So I go, no, no appointment. And they go, you want something to drink? I go, yeah. What do you got? I go, oh, you got, we got coffee, liquor, beer, wine. I go, I'll take a coffee. So now I got this nice coffee and Lorenzo. He's a mm. sexy black guy with dreads and a suit. He looks amazing, sharp as a tech. He's got the bicep in the suit. Ah, uh, that's, that's a good look. That's a great look. <laughs> yes. Because you're, you're buff, but you're still refined. It's like I was talking about the, these uh, detectives. They have the suit with the gun. Oh, I love Hottest a look su- all time. Love a suit with a gun. It's, you see it in the in the, the jacket, yeah. just kind of barely. The badge on the belt. Woo! They pull it back like this. Forget about it. Get out of here. Put it right in my ass. Suit and a gun. So um, we go in there, and he goes, you want a tux? You want this? And I go, I want to look good. I want to look sharp. So he goes, I got it. He pulls out this suit. It's got a vest. It looked like I would wear a timepiece. I looked like a like a conductor of a train in the 40s. Mm, I'll show you a photo. Like a Doc Holiday. Yeah, so I sent it to the lady, and she's like, I can't tell you why, but no. She's like, I can't put my finger on it, but this is horrible. I knew she'd have to be involved somewhere. Yes. I can't believe you're not with a buddy. You gotta get a buddy. I should have got a, I should have got like a Hamilton or something. Yes, Hamilton's good. Yes, good play. So uh, I'm yeah. like, no, nah, this isn't it, whatever. And I go, I think I wanna go tux. And he goes, All right, all right. So then he has to put that suit down. He comes back with a tux. And it had these wacky lapels that pointed out like this. And mm. I go, Can I just get a straight lapel, you know, just a straight down. He goes, well, that's custom. And I go, that's custom? I thought this looks weird. I thought that was normal. He's like, no, no, that's custom. So I got these, this is my, I'm trying on my third tux now. And this guy is getting annoyed with me visibly. I'm changing. I'm doing this. I'm taking photos. And the guy goes, uh, and it's just a shitty situation because you're like, I'm bothering this guy. So you're uncomfortable now. So then That's their job. It's their job. It's his job. I know, but I don't have an appointment. I drank the coffee. I'm wet. I don't know. It didn't feel good. So I'm like, God, this this is not good. So I'm just starting to get anxiety. I'm starting to feel weird. And then he goes, hold on. My my 4 o'clock is here. So this guy made an appointment. Oh, the appointment. So now I'm the straggling queef. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go deal with him, but I'll be back. And I go, all right. I just left. Oh, I had had to get out of there. I bailed. Did I you flew take the coop. The tux? No, I didn't, I didn't want to steal anything, but oh I got the coffee. God. I used, I took this guy uh, 40 minutes of this guy's time. He oh. had a stack of suits on the counter like this. Just, you know, how about this one? How about this one? No, maybe. I'm taking photos. I had to get out of there. This is why Hamilton's good. First of all, this is a sign that you don't want to get married, but this is what <laughs> Hamilton is good because I had this. We went shopping for my Letterman suit. Bless, Bless you. you. We went shopping for my Letterman suit, and... I went, looked at shoes for like 35 minutes, and then by the end, Hamilton's like, ah, you're not comfortable. I, I don't care for him anyways. All right, we'll get out of here. And I was like, what? I can't do that. I was like, we got to buy shoes. The guy, and, he, and Hamilton's like, no, no, that's his job, and we don't like the shoes. He's like, they're $400. I mean, he's completely right, but I just, I can't live like that. I had the same thing. I was like walking up Madison Avenue, like looking back, yes, and the guy yes. was in the window, like staring at me. Yes. I still think about him. I can't walk up 44th and Madison. I can't walk by. I can't do it. I'll never go back there again. It's been 10 years. I, I haven't <laughs> worn shoes since then. Well, when you get married again, I think you should go back. Uh, it'll be soon. But I, I I just, yeah, I felt the same way. I couldn't do it, and I panicked, and I and I go, I, I start walking out, and it's like a three-floor place. This is like a big to do and one guy goes sir you good he had the the, uh, measuring tape on his you know and all the pins I like that look it's a good look and he goes sir you you okay where you going and I go "Uh, tell Lorenzo I'll be right back and he goes 
Okay. He knew what I was doing. Oh, jeez. So bad. It was a bad exit, and I just run back out there in the rain. I grab my box, and I go, oh, I feel feel myself again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm you trash. Wear a box. Yes, I'll wear a box. So That's what do you bad. do? What's the next step? Because it's coming up soon. I know. So I text a friend, and once you're in that mode, because I don't want to go suit shopping, but you're in the mode. You're like, I'm doing yeah. it. I'm in Soho. I'm going for it. So I text my friend, who's like a fashionista, mm-hmm. and he goes, this is what you want. Beep, boop, boop. Sends me a J. Crew link. Beautiful tux. And I go, that's it. That was my Letterman suit, J. Crew. Ah. J. Peterman. Ah. Jeff recommends. So I go, all right. And I go, J. Crew, G- GPS, 400 feet away. Woo. Wow. You got to love Soho. So it's raining. I run in there. I meet this tall drink of water. He goes, what can I help you today, sir? I go, I'm getting married. He goes, oh, my God. Bep, bep, bep. We go in the dress room. He gives me the tux. He had the exact one. I bought it right there. Oh, nice. You bought it. I bought it, Jerry. All right. You own a tux. Should I rent? I don't know. Well, you might go to the Oscars or Emmys or something at some point. Uh Ah. The tux. How often do you wear a tux? Very rarely. But I think it's weird to rent a tux. I think people like look down on you. Yeah. That's a rental. And then people are like, "Uh uh-huh, you idiot. I know. But now let me ask you, bow tie or tie? Uh, with a tux? I don't know. I thought it was bow tie. Yeah, well, you can do both now. They're I versatile. Don't know. I always confuse what a tux is or looks like. You wear a tie for a tux? You can now. Can you? You got a computer there? Can you pull up bow tie? I mean, tux with a tie? I don't think yeah. I've ever seen that before. Yeah, it's out there. So tux is at the Oscars. That's a tux. That's a tux. Uh, the prom. Prom is a tux. Some weddings. The looks, black tie means tux. It looks normal. Oh, is that I mean, right? See? It, it, it looks like Let it's Let me see. Normal. Can you swing that around? Let, yeah, me, let, let me take find, a peek uh, at that. Here, this guy I guess I have my own phone right tie. here. But. How about this? That's a tux. That's a tux. Oh, that okay. looks pretty snazzy. Yeah, that's pretty, very snazzy. I don't want to block the uh, camera here. You know what the mean? cameras? Yeah, yeah, that's hot. Yeah, that's, that's a nice. good look. Cause it, a that's boat, a tux. I think of that as a suit, but that's a tux. But a bow tie has got a little, it's got a little goof to it. Oh, yeah, goof troop. Yes. So what is what is the difference between a tux and a suit? Just the lapels. The, the lapels, sh- there's a sheen on it, and the, okay. the suit fits different, and the pants have that mailman line going down it. Okay, you so that's see it. That? I think that's about it, and you wear these shiny, shiny black shoes. Right. It, it's definitely a little more formal. It's a little slicker. Yeah, yes. it says the biggest difference between a tuxedo and a suit is the presence of satin, which is what you're talking about with the shiny lips. Satin. Thing. Yes. Mm. Stripe down the side. Those are both satin. Got it. Satin lace. Satin night live. Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah. So does does John Mulaney wear a tux? Because that looks very Mulaney right there. I don't think he's in a tux. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Ah. Yikes. Gross. Whee. That's like, that's Mark's watch. Is your sneeze. Beep, beep. Yeah. I mean, whatever he's wearing, it looks pretty tuxy. Well, he's a clean cut son of an onion. That's one tux, yeah, one wearing, no he's tux. He's wearing a tux here and there. All right. Okay. I think sometimes he does, and sometimes it's just a suit. I tux with that. Wow. All yeah. right. Well, I'm excited. I, I got to start making plans for your wedding because uh, Canner's texted me. He's like, What days are you going? What hotel? And I'm like, I, I, I can't. I haven't even put my head there yet. Well, he'll bring the, some Coke and the N word, and we'll have a great time. But. Uh, Ari's getting a big pad if you guys want to join in. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so. I got to start making some calls. Yeah, make a, make a meal out of it. Because I, I don't know what to do. I'm like, I'm going to end up at the fucking, uh, you know, the, the, the New Orleans motel or something. Oh. Getting jacked up and cracked up and crazy. You don't want to go to the New Orleans motel, the Nomo. <laughs> that is a tough spot. <laughs> a day Nomo. Yeah, get a, <laughs> a Nomo slider. But uh, get, the, uh, get the Airbnb down there. Get a nice hotel. Really... Make a meal. Let's get there early. Sean Patton's officiating. We got catering. It's going to be a humdinger. Yeah, I got to sink my teeth in because I, I'm out riding fences. I got the festival and this thing and that other thing. And you're going to Skankfest, right? Have they um, announced that? Can we say that? I think they've announced. I have a gig, but I'm trying to get there for one day, uh, like I did last time. You're always the one day guy. Yeah. Well, they do it. Yeah, you guys weekends. are announced on it. Oh, okay. oh, really? I believe so. I, think uh, so. Shit. I thought so. Maybe I'll, I'll double check, but I thought so. I think our podcast is in the thing. That's oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. I got to work on that. Oh, boy. Well, it's only Friday, Saturday, right? It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Friday, it's, Saturday, Sunday. I is it a, if it's a Sunday, then I'm, I could make it. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, 14th I think so. to the 16th. Okay. All yeah. right. I can Sunday. Clock in me for Sunday. All right. I'll put you down for a Sunday. Yeah, please do. Big old Sunday. All right. So, Bloody Mark Sunday. Norman. Yep. 
Oh, you hate to hear that. All right, I got to figure that out. Yes. I don't see Tuesdays with Stories, though. Ah. I, I did think it was announced somewhere, but there's also, I don't know if there's any podcast listed. It just says comics. Okay, there's probably a podcast section, maybe. Well, if I go there, we're doing a pod. Yeah, Ooh, Steve-O's going to be there. That's hey. weird. Hey. Tell him Steve-O. <laughs> yeah, tell him Steve-O. <laughs> Uh, well, that's fun. That'll be exciting. <coughs> yes. Hey, where are we at in this thing? Do, I, do we have time for more stories? Yeah, 50 minutes. 50? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, hit we me. got something else. So I got the suit. It's in It's in the mail. and uh, The tux. The tux, sorry. And uh, it's in the mail. I'm going to get it to the ship to the house and alter that puppy. I'm excited. Well, how are you feeling? Are you starting to get gay? Are you getting horny? What I'm, are you thinking? I'm terrified. I feel like a grown-up. I got a lot cooking. I'm buying a home. I'm um, you the know, Brooklyn. The Brooklyn. I'm getting married. We're going. We might go to Africa for the wedding. We're going to see the the, the lion. Wedding. We're going to see Idris for the honeymoon. The honeymoon. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Africa. Yeah. Not for the wedding. Yeah. Doesn't well, your brother live in Africa or have a play timeshare? No, no, he's white. He did for a minute. though. He did. Don't he act went, like he didn't have Africa. He went to the I Peace Corps. Your brother is Africa. He went to the Peace Corps. Yeah. Okay. Well, you never know what's you know what I mean. What's real and what's not. Sometimes I'm like, is this guy <laughs> in Africa? He check his papers. He's, <laughs> okay. he's out of Africa. And uh, that, great is, film. Is that a band? Africa. That's a song. Africa. Toto. Yeah, that's a fun tune. It's a great tune. And then Weezer covered it, kind of like note for note, and it was like a hit. And I was like, I don't get it. I never. I hate when no people interpretation do that. or anything. No, nothing. But I think this is the thing. We're from the '80s, so we knew the song. The young whippersnappers are like, oh, my God, this is amazing. That's why it's a hit. Yeah, it's a hit. But shouldn't Toto get all of that money? Hey, Weezer, you just did our song back to front, note to note. That's us. I think they get some money. Yeah. They should. Yeah, you have to li- when you release songs like that, you have to license them. You have to yeah. Pay. Okay. Yeah. Well, good for Africa then, or Toto. Toto. Yeah. Africa's fucked. Well, but good for a Toto <clears throat> and the little dog too. Well, t- when they did that, <laughs> Toto covered a Weezer song at the same time. They both released covers of each other's songs. Oh, mm. that's fun. Toto covered Hash Pipe. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't hear a word about that. Well, how much do you hear about Toto? Ooh. Not much, except for right now. I know that you don't care, but he wants you to know. Um, Anti Toto. It was like you know what I mean. It fit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, all right. Well, so you're nervous. You're you're, you're scared. I, I'm nervous. I'm nervous for you. I mean, that's a lot. I'm looking forward. The wedding's gonna be a banger. We got a great group. We got a lot of good eggs coming, and uh, Chuck's gonna be there on the ones and anals, and it'll be fun. And then the the honeymoon's gonna be bananas. So. That's what I'm looking at right now. I'm taking it day by day like an alcoholic. Yeah, you got to do it. I mean, uh, it's exciting. So where in Africa are you going? South? North? Egypt? Uh, well, we're looking at this package deal. Get this, fatty. We're going, starting in South Africa, hit Cape Town, you know, really do it up in a nice city, and then <laughs> head up to the old bush women up in uh, Kenya and do the safari. Oh, my God. Yes. This is terrifying. The giraffes, they come right up to the door, you feed them. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Boy, that is uh, that is something else. My my mother in law and sister in law are in South Africa right now. What? Yeah, that's what are why they my doing? wife is in Houston. Ah, they're down there. They're from there. Ah, that's right. Sarah was born there. She could probably get you a hookup. Maybe Ooh, a, do a couple guest spots. Somewhere. Maybe she give me a spear. <laughs> All right. Well, so let me just get through this real quick. This is just nothing but fun. Put it right in my dick. So I'm down there in Houston. I go down to the Astros. You know me. I was like, I got to go to an event. If, sure. I'm not, I don't, if I don't have a ticket, then forget about it. You yeah, know what you I mean? got a ticket to ride. I need a ticket. I'm going to the men's semifinal this weekend. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going, how about this? Friday, I'm going to the men's U.S. Open semifinals. Uh-huh. Saturday, I'm going to Pearl Jam at the Apollo Theater. Sunday, wow. Pearl Jam at the Garden. Wow. I don't even know if you're doing comedy. I mean, I, I quit comedy a while ago. Yeah, you're, you're Ticketmaster. It's pretty exciting, but uh, I'll be at Royal Oak at the end of the month. There we go. Big city. So we go to the Astros game Monday night, which is fun. You know, you go down to Minute Maid Park, which looks like a shopping mall, yeah. and sat behind the bullpen and, uh, you know, we're driving the game. I'm like, let me see who's pitching in this game. Uh-huh. It's a guy named Hunter Brown. Oh, I went to high school with that guy. Really? A different Hunter Brown. Maybe it's the same one. Well, no, this guy's 24. Yeah, yeah. This guy was uh, an addict. Oh, ah, no kidding. Well, this guy's name is Hunter Brown. He's making his major <laughs> league debut. How exciting is that? That's huge. That's really fun. So, And we got front row behind the bullpen. So you can watch him warm up, and you're like, this is so exciting. The guy's hey. sweating, and he's excited. He must guy. be terrified. He's shitting his pants, and I'm looking at him going, like, this guy must be shitting his pants. No doubt about it, but good for him. That's, uh, that's a huge moment. 
It was very exciting. But then he goes out there, and it's his first major league pitch. And you know what's fun? I got a little gay goose bump. Love a gay goose. Because he goes out there, and we're out in the outfield. We're 575 feet away. But you see the first pitch, and the catcher catches it and immediately just rolls it into the dugout. Uh-huh. Because you're like, hold on to that. That's your first oh, major league pitch. Oh, you got to love the little superstitious uh, baseball stuff. Well, you get the goose. It's a little goosebumps because you're like, ah, oh, that's his first pitch. He battled all the way here. He's 24 years old. He's dreamed of this since he was his kid. His dad bought him a glove. Then he hit him and beat him until he was proper good. Of course. His parents got divorced, I'm sure. And then a couple pitches later, he strikes the guy out, and then you watch that ball roll into the dugout, because wow. it's like, there's your first pitch, there's your first strikeout, and it made me think about this long, arduous journey we've been on. Here, here. And Queer. don't you wish you had that from your first set? You just take the microphone and you go, all right, that's the end of the show. I'm keeping this. I tried. They called the police. But uh, it, it just makes you feel like what a what a journey we've been on. Huge journey. Somebody put it well. They said you guys moved to, you guys were on the video game. If, if moving to New York and being a comic is a video game, you guys did it on the most difficult level and still beat the game. Oh, wow. It's true. You know, you move here with nothing, you make it work, you figure it out, you eat shit for 10 years, and then before you know it, you're on uh, Conan. Old Jed's a millionaire, but it's, it's exciting. And you, you think about that when you go back, I'm like, how did I move here? I think I about it now, mentally now, I'm like, I wouldn't do that again. I think about that, I could never do it again. You're like, I, I just came, Dan Bulger and I, and it was like before Google Maps. Oh, we and just smartphones like, we even. Just printed a thing and like drove to Astoria. We were like, oh yeah. I remember literally being like, this is Astoria, just get off here. Yes, yes. And be like, okay, because I knew John Fish lived in Astoria, so we're just like, Driving around, and then we found a broker, which I, we had yes, no money. We were yes. broke, broker than anybody. Right. And then we said, okay, let's. we want a place to live, please. Yeah, and you gave him a lot of cash, and he fucked you in the ass, and you go, I guess this is normal. And I was such a loser. I'd never done anything. I'd never done nothing. I just went like, okay, and then you're like calling your mother, being like, okay, I live in New York now. Yes. She's like, what? Send send mail. And then like the <laughs> electricity's turned off, and you're like, ah, I guess we'll just go no lights for a day. Yeah, we can hack it. Who needs lights? The Amish do it. And, uh, roaches everywhere, and a pile of dishes, and then Bulger moved back. Ira took off, and I like found another place to live. Yeah. It was all word of mouth. It was uh, maybe a newspaper listing. Craigslist was big back when I was banging. We... Flew to New York, me and Zach Sims. We got off a cab. We jumped in a cab off of JFK. My mom knew a lady in Brooklyn. She goes, stay with her for a night. This old lady let us stay at her place in Brooklyn. We slept on a couch. We woke up. We said, where are the open mics? We went and found an open mic, ate shit. We went to the Boston Comedy Club. Because we're like, this is comedy. We'll right. go here. And then we, I went on Craigslist, found an apartment for $400, Met the guy. He was a, a sexy, gay, Hispanic guy. He goes, here you go. He signed it on loose leaf, the lease. And he goes, this is your place. And he died a couple weeks later of AIDS. Wow. We had a pigeon in our apartment the second night. God, it's so crazy. I remember sitting, listening to the 2007 ALCS Red Sox Indians on the radio. Yeah, Like sitting on the on thing because we had radio. no cable. We had a TV that was like... You plugged it, it would attach to a VCR, literally. Uh-huh. And we had a DVD. It was a DVD slash VCR. Uh, but I the, sat the, listening the to the Red Sox on the radio, which is so crazy. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? I was going to talk about something. Oh, farts. It was something big about moving. Moving to New York, Astoria, rent uh, rent control, oh, electricity shit. turned off, it was Bolger in- killed himself. It was important, and then you... St- but we stayed. Some people have come and gone, and we kept going. Well, there, was there was no was... option for really. Like, what, are you going to go back home? Yeah, yeah people did. That's what it. everyone was doing. I couldn't do it. More people have done that than not done that, I feel I like. I guess, but I just felt like, ah, just keep going. Something will happen. Yeah. And then the fighting with other comics and the, the, the clawing your way. I hosted an open mic at the Lantern for a while. I mean, it was hell. I barked. Yeah, I barked. I barked twice, and I just couldn't do it. I'm it was done with that. It was tough. Yeah, tough sledding, but you know, just a little bit here. Then I got on a real show. I'm not off the mics. I got on a real show. Then I got a club spot. Oh my god, the clubs! Yeah, that was wild. And then I do it like live at Gotham. You're oh. Like, oh my god, this is exciting. And your big Montreal audition. And you just kept going. I had something. And we were worth drunk saying. the whole time. By the way, I mean, I was drunk from you know night one to night. 
eight thousand. Oh, I was yeah, completely out of my mind. Oh, this is what I was gonna say. He got I would had no smartphone, no computer once a day. I always think this is mind blowing. It sounds like I'm from the fucking sixties. Uh, right. One time a day, I would walk from Forty First and Twentieth Avenue in Astoria, which is the end of Astoria. I mean, okay. that's like. The end of the city. It's as far like northeast as you can go. The end of the line. And I mean, that's not true, but it's as far north as you can go in Queens. And I would walk all the way to 31st Street and Ditmars, which is like two long blocks over, 10 blocks down, mm -hmm. go to an internet cafe above the subway. Oh, uh, yeah. For one hour a day. Yes. I had the internet for an hour. I would go on, check my Facebook messages. There was no Twitter. I didn't have Twitter yet, or yep. it, uh, Twitter didn't exist yet. I don't think it existed. I would check Facebook and email and be like, me an hour at most, and no text. And yeah. I would just go, all right. That was that. that Sign was out. That. Give them three bucks. Yep. Then I would go to Burger King, eat Burger King, and go back to my house. That was your day. And I had no spots. I would just be like, all right, well... That was that. That was that. And how are we going to get drunk tonight? That was my one business day. And then Bulger and I would go to the grocery store and get wine. We went to Blockbuster Video and rented Three oh, Men and a Baby. Oh, We'd smoke sad. weed out of the Mountain Dew bottle. I'd make the yes. aluminum foil thing. And yes. Get high. And then occasionally, like, Fish would have a spot at Broadway. We'd just go to Broadway and be just like, Just go right. watch him. Yes. We'd yes. watch John Fish do comedy. I remember that. I remember going to the cellar and, and getting yelled at by Sherrod. I was in the front row, like, oh. Uh, yes, Harry Potter. Yeah. I mean, every single comic did that. I'm like, I just have glasses. I get it. Sure, and sure. And now here we are at the cellar, the stand, the show is big, uh, the theaters, the things. Well, that's it's why wild. it's so sad when comics fight with other comics. I'm like, we've been through hell. We've been in the trenches. What are we doing? Why are we coming after each other? Uh, I've been saying it for a year. Even when comics fought not online. Yes. I just was like, how can you treat comics? We're all... Getting fucked by everybody constantly. Of course. It's just constant, just fucking people over. Which I always say, it's like, people are like, that guy's a diva. This, like, celebrity, when you're like this. Do you know how shittily we are treated I know. for 20 straight years? Yes. Then you make it, and you're like, get out of the fucking green room. Shut the door and get out of here. <laughs> right. It's like, whoa, this guy's an asshole. He's and you're difficult. like this. You fucked me for years. Yes. You gave me 75 bucks a set. The money went down right. from the 80s. Right. No living. I lost money. And then you're like, well, we discovered you. And you're like, no, you underpaid me for fucking years. I know. And this is how shitty it is. If you are if you meet a nice guy or gal who's like accommodating, you're, you, we all talk about it. We go, this guy's amazing. He's right. awesome. That's how rare it is. But yeah, the whole thing sucks. And I couldn't do it again. And you need that delusion. You need to be a 23 three-year-old, you know, tarred just to get through it because you don't know any better. Well, that's what I love. Richard Jenny used to say when people, comics ask him for advice, he said, I tell them to quit mm. because if they quit, then they were never going to make it anyways. Ah. And if they ignore that, then they have what it takes to be like this. Ah, quit. Whatever. I like it. Because if someone, even if someone, this is the thing about guys like us, people that do well, it's like even if someone told you how difficult and brutal it is, it didn't matter. Right. You're like this. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah. That's what, what I'm doing. doing. Exactly. I remember Gullman saying to me when I was like 19, he's like, you should quit now. He's like, this business is so heartbreaking. Ah. He's like, you're just going to face so much shit. He's like, you're such a sweet young guy. He's like, go to school. Be a lawyer. You're bright. Nah. It's hilarious. That I like, almost failed out of high school. I don't love that, uh, that advice because it's, it's too absolute. You don't know what you're going through. You don't know how bad you need this. This whole thing of like, you should quit. What if you're the next big thing? Well, I think he's being somewhat um, playful. Ah, he's I didn't saying know the you're a cute guy. You're having a you're 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 full with life. Sure, get out of this horrible business. Sounds like he's hitting on you. But yeah, either way, maybe. but <laughs> anyways, we did it. The, the kid Hunter Brown, he pitched a hell of a game, by the way. Ah. He gave up no runs on three hits in his debut, so that was exciting. That kid's but gonna be all right because if he can get through that first day pressure and still kill it. He's going to be just gravy. He kicked ass. So that was exciting. I, I got to do some plugs here for my own and some other. Justin McKinney, one of my favorite comics Funny ever. Funny guy. Speaking of which, this guy, when in 2002, I lived at my parents' house. I had a show at a place called Java Bob's down the street. First mm. time I had a show. And Justin McKinney had been on The Tonight Show. Wow. He lived in L.A. He had like been on the couch with Jay. What? And the couch, Jerry. I, he was like my favorite comic, and he called, left a voicemail on my mother's answering machine. 
and was like, hey, Joe, uh, my name's Justin McKinney. I'm a comedian. I'm in town. I've been on the Tonight Show. I just wanted to see if I could do time on your show. I heard it's a good show. And I was like, oh, my God. I remember telling my mother, I'm like, save this. Save this. Yes. Justin McKinney. Because when you're a kid, someone that's been on the Tonight Show is like a oh, mega star. Huge. And I thought, I was like, this guy is amazing. He's letting me. He's calling me. He's asking me to do a show. Wow. But anyways, 20 years later, he's got a, a special on YouTube, free special. Go check it out. Justin with an O. Absolutely hilarious. All right. Check out McKinn. Check that out. And then uh, I got some dates coming up. We added a second show to the Hollywood Improv. Hey, I love a second show. September 21st is now a 9.30, 7.30 sold out. Thanks to everyone that sold it out. Get tickets to the second show because there's such a gamble when you add a show. Yes. That no one comes to the second show. Yes. So come to that. I got Fahim Anwar's on there. Whoa. Lindsay Adams is on there. Killer show. Hot show. Hollywood Improv, September 21st. And then uh, September 29th, 30th, October 1st, Comedy Castle in Royal Oak, Michigan. Hell yeah. Come to that one. I'll be selling uh, these little gay t shirts. And then a bunch more dates on my website. Hartford Funny Bone is coming up. Syracuse Funny Bone is coming oh. up. Uh, what do you call it? Madison Comedy on Stage hey, is coming up. There we go. Cleanse the palate. And go subscribe to my YouTube. where that it, it, The numbers keep going up. I, I just shot two comedy sketches that are coming out Ooh. this week. They're probably already out by the time you're seeing this. I want to see that, that Nazi one. Oh, yeah. That's going to be fun. And uh, so go check that out and watch the special. Yes. All right, you LA Queefs. Go see him at the Improv, and I'm coming to Brea Comedy Club. Same weekend. Oh, jeez. Well, I know. Always. We can say hello. Uh, Brea's a, it's an hour out. Uh, mine's a Wednesday. Oh, they all right. Come to fine. both. They're doing well. Go to both. The economy's great. San Jose Improv, uh, the Danforth Theater in Toronto. We added a show there. Orlando Improv, Rock Coco Theater. I think that's in Pittsburgh. No, wait. Hold on. I don't know where the fuck that is. All right. And then the Pantages in Minneapolis and the Englert Theater. I believe that's in Iowa. Uh, Revolution Hall in Portland, Oregon, Neptune Theater in Seattle, Funny Bone, Albany, uh, Nashville, Zanies, the Joy Theater in New Orleans, the Wilbur in Boston, and the Fillmore in Philly, and something in New Haven. Come on out, say hello, queef it up, check out the specials. We're on Netflix, we're on YouTube, we got a hell of a Patreon. Patreon. It's cooking, always new stuff. Chuck organized the shit out of it. He's the Marie Kondo of, of pods, and he put it all together. It's gold, baby. It's lunch. If you're, you're kooky, if you're not on it, talk about $3 movie day. We yes. got $3 Patreon since yes. Jump Street, you yes. fucking kooks. And subscribe to the YouTube. Yes. Get those numbers up, for God's sakes. It's all algorithm. Yeah, For the yeah, love go. of Pete, go to my fucking YouTube and subscribe. Go to the Instagram and subscribe. Go to our YouTube, subscribe. Yes. And leave comments and likes. This fucking algorithm will be the death of me. I know. It's, it's the new religion. It's taken over. Allah is out. Algo is in. They're like, you got to paste at 845 uh, a.m. I'm like, what? I can't just... Take a joke and put I it online. Know. You gotta fucking you fuck off. And you gotta hashtag it and tag people. It's a it's a nightmare. So uh, yeah, sorry to the people of Brandon, Mississippi, and uh, praise Allah.